Hello everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I'm going to discuss about uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, convolutional neural networks are the backbone of uh, deep learning algorithms. It's uh, very important to understand uh, it uh, thoroughly. So to facilitate uh, better understanding, I've divided uh, this lecture into four parts. So this is the lecture plan uh, for convolutional neural networks. In part one, I'll uh, discuss all the major convolutional properties, operation, uh, the different types of filter, the padding properties and uh, so on. Uh, in the second part, I'll discuss another important uh, layer in uh, CNN which is the pooling layer and uh, the other activation functions which we use in uh, convolutional neural networks followed by one of the important aspects uh, of how to visualize uh, convolutional neural networks that is basically visualizing the filters. In the final part, I'll be discussing about uh, very popular uh, CNN architecture like uh, AlexNet, GoogleNet, etc. So what exactly is a convolutional operation? It's a mathematical operation consisting of a series of uh, multiplication operation between uh, two uh, matrices and uh, summation of the products. So in order to illustrate this, uh, let's take an example of a convolutional operation between matrix A and uh, matrix B. So what I do is I take the uh, individual elements of uh, uh, matrix A and then uh, multiply with the corresponding uh, elements with, uh, uh, in uh, matrix B and then sum it over and then I slide uh, my matrix A to cover the entire uh, elements of matrix B. So it might be confusing at this point. So to clear it up, uh, let's see an example in action. So uh, this is a convolutional operation uh, in a typical uh, convolutional neural network. So uh, this is my first matrix, uh, which is generally called the kernel or the filter. And uh, this particular matrix is my input matrix, uh, which can be an image or a signal. In case of signal, it will be a one dimensional array. And uh, so uh, I'm performing the convolutional operation. So this kind of star which you see is the uh, symbol for convolutional operation. So what I'm going to do is take my uh, kernel or filter uh, matrix and then uh, uh, multi uh, perform the convolutional operation and uh, slide throughout the matrix. Okay. So in the very first uh, column in my output uh, is going to be the multiplication of my uh, kernel or filter with the first four uh, elements in my uh, input uh, matrix. So the corresponding uh, output will be alpha A plus beta B and uh, gamma D and uh, delta E. So uh, this is basically the corresponding elements uh, of uh, uh, multiplied with uh, the kernel and the da data uh, matrix and then uh, summation of all the products. So similarly, I'll slide my uh, kernel to different uh, portions of my uh, matrix and I get my output. The output is generally called the feature map. Convolution operation is uh, widely used in signal and image processing application. To get you a better feel of uh, how convolution works, so I'm going to discuss two examples, one uh, in case of how processing signals and uh, one in case of processing image. In case of processing signals, I've used a moving average filter as my kernel uh, to uh, reduce all the noises. And uh, in case of images, I've used a uh, uh, kernel based on Gaussian function. Basically, uh, this particular kernel makes the intensity variation smooth uh, and it blurs out the images because uh, the sharp edges are removed. So let's have a uh, look at it. I have a noisy input signal and I wish to remove uh, these noises and have a nice smoothly varying uh, signal, input signal. So what I do is basically convert a kernel uh, or a filter with this particular uh, input and then uh, obtain a very smoothly varying uh, input signal. So I take uh, a very popular filter which is called the moving average filter. Uh, this is my filter and then I convolve uh, this filter with uh, the input noise signal 
and uh, it basically averages out uh, the neighboring uh, values uh, and uh, removes out the noise. So you can see a nicely uh, varying uh, signal with after convolution. Okay. So to have a better comparison, uh, this is my uh, input signal and this is my signal after convolution. So it uh, works out really well. Now let us uh, convolve an image. So this is the per one particular image which I have uh, taken. So I am going to use my Gaussian filter as my kernel and uh, basically what it does is take a kernel which has a Gaussian function and then uh, convolves through every single point and uh, the result would be basically a smoothened version. Uh, or in other words, the edges would be blurred and with the image would be slightly blurred. So you can see the uh, result after convolution. So here you can see very sharp uh, edges, but after convolution, the edges are blurred out. And uh, one more example from uh, SciPy library. So this is the image which I'm going to convolve. So after convolving, you can see the edges are uh, blurred out and uh, this is uh, an example for uh, convolutional operation. Let's talk our input about our input data. Uh, most of the times either we deal with an image or a signal. For example, if it's a RGB image, we have a three channel image. So uh, the matrix dimensions will be uh, height into width into uh, three corresponding to these three channels and in case of audio signals uh, we have a dual channel stereo system uh, left corresponding to the left uh, speaker and the right speaker. Let's look into how uh, the filters look like uh, for processing signals it will be the filter will be a one dimensional array. Uh, so this is the moving average filter which I used in the example too and uh, for a grayscale image uh, it is a single channel image. So uh, the dimensions of the kernel function will also be a two dimensional matrix. Uh, for a multicolor channel uh, uh, image like uh, RGB image, uh, it is uh, has uh, three different channels corresponding to red, blue and green. So our filter will also be a three channel uh, into uh, the size of the, mat uh, of the kernel. So uh, in this case, it will be uh, the kernel uh, say 3 cross 3 or 4 cross 4 and uh, the width would be the dimension of the channel. I hope you have a better understanding of how uh, convolutional operation works. So now let's move on and uh, look into the properties of a convolutional operation. The convolutional operation is linear, commutative, associative and distributive. So let's see what it means. The convolutional operation is linear in nature. What it means is if I have a, a matrix A and B and I convolve them, I uh, let's say I have an output uh, of C, matrix C. I change the uh, value of uh, matrix B by multiplying a scalar value alpha with it. The output still remains C just that it is uh, scaled up with a factor of alpha. Convolutional operation is uh, commutative in nature. What it means is uh, convolving uh, matrix A with uh, B is same as convolving B with A. Suppose uh, A is my image uh, matrix and uh, B is my filter matrix. So convolving image with a filter is same as convolving filter with an image. Convolution is uh, associative in nature. Convolving a matrix A with the convolution output of between B and C is same as uh, convolving A and B first and uh, take the output convolving with C. Finally, it's also distributive in nature. Convolutional of A with B and convolution with A and C is uh, nothing but convolution of A with uh, convolution into B plus C. Now let's see the parameters involved in a convolutional operation. The very first thing is the size of the kernel, the kernel function, 
the stride which is the number of pixels which will be moving and the padding before we dwell into the parameters let's uh, quickly look back into the convolutional operation so, uh, this is the example of uh, convolutional operation we saw a while ago uh, this is my uh, kernel function and uh, it has a fixed size uh, in this case it's 2 comma 2 and uh, it also has a proper uh, function uh, in case of uh, the blurring function I used a uh, Gaussian function and uh, this is basically a filter and uh, this is a input and uh, input can be of any shape it doesn't really matter and uh, the output uh, uh, is uh, generally uh, down sampled but uh, I'll later discuss whether we can also have the output as the same size of the input so in this case uh, the output is down sampled the input is 3 comma 3 while the output is 2 comma 2 very first uh, parameter which we'll define is uh, kernel size uh, generally it's odd and uh, square uh, matrix so for example it can be 3 comma 3 or 5 comma 5 and uh, the second parameter is a kernel function uh, if you're defining your own filters uh, for example a Gaussian function which we saw earlier it can be any other function also the next uh, parameter is stride stride basically defines how many pixel we have to move after each operation for example uh, here the stride is of 2 uh, 2 in x direction we can also add an additional uh, parameter called for say 2 comma 2 so after it uh, goes uh, 2 pixels every in uh, x direction it will uh, hop on and uh, come uh, 2 pixels down after completion of uh, this particular row and uh, this particular uh, parameter is called stride final parameter is called padding uh, if you uh, choose padding to be same uh, as input uh, there will be some extra values in the matrices padded at the edges which will be zero so the result of the uh, convolutional operation will be uh, the matrix with the same dimensions or as the input so this is uh, same and if you give the padding as valid the size of the uh, output matrices will be reduced or in other words down sampled these are the basics of uh, convolutional operation i hope you guys have understood it well uh, i have attached i python notebook uh, so you can uh, play around and uh, have a good uh, sense of how convolutional operation works it's uh, very important to know and understand because it is the building block uh, for uh, deep learning uh, algorithms so now that you know what is the convolutional operation uh, you can actually very much uh, guess what's a convolutional neural network so basically in uh, convolutional neural network uh, instead of a uh, uh, conventional uh, matrix multiplication between the weight and the neurons we uh, replace them with the convolutional operations so instead of matrix uh, multiplications it's just convolutions over there so don't worry we'll uh, deal a lot more about uh, convolutional neural networks in the upcoming lectures uh, stay tuned and have a nice day